Greetings, friends and brethren. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Continuing Church of God. Are there five ways Christians can biblically celebrate Halloween? Well, you know, Halloween is an old English word. It means hallowed or holy evening. And it's been reported by the uh, National Retail Federation that Halloween's the second biggest commercial holiday in America, uh, generates around $10 billion in sales, now, although many claim the origins of Halloween are Christian, the fact that this is a commercial holiday with, with pagan overtones, th that's reality, and that's actually why October 31st was chosen for it. Now, should Christians celebrate Halloween, and are there biblical reasons to observe it or not? Each year, at least in the United States, various Protestants put out articles as to why they feel that uh, celebration of Halloween is appropriate. I'm going to go through that in this sermon, but one of my focuses is going to be what you heard me say at the beginning, and that is I want to read a headline and statements from an article from a website called Christianity.com. Now, this was published on September 12, 2024, so it was published last month, and the title is Five Ways Christians Can Biblically Celebrate Halloween. They're typing it, so they're tying in Christians, the Bible, and Halloween. Now, this article came out in plenty of time for people to consider whether or not they should celebrate Halloween in 2024, in my view. Um, and if Christians should celebrate Halloween, certainly the reasons would need to have biblical support. In Matthew 4, verse 4, Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And I want to go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. I'm quoting Jesus and the Apostle Paul here to show that, yes, the Bible is a criteria that we're supposed to be using. Anyway, 2 Timothy 3, starting verse 16, New King James. Paul taught, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So Jesus said we're supposed to live by every word of God, and the Apostle Paul taught there's enough in Scripture to, com to be complete enough that we can be corrected and equipped for every good work. So obviously the Scriptures can be trusted, as far as what we should do. Now, but not all who claim to use scriptures seem to do it. Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. A lot of people uh, who say they are Christians, Christian leaders or pastors or whatever, they quote scripture. Does that mean that they're telling us the truth? Well, the, the scriptures themselves are truth, but the way they twist them... Uh, isn't always the truth. Matter of fact, when Jesus said the statement I mentioned in Matthew 4.4, 4, he's actually talking to Satan, the devil who had quoted scripture. Anyway, Paul wrote 2 Corinthians 11, starting in verse 11, but what I do I also continue to do, that I might cut off opportunity for those who desire to be regarded just as we are in the things of which they boast. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it's no great thing if Satan's ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end is going to be according to their work. Now, St. Jude, Apostle Jude, wrote about this as well. I'm going to go to Jude, only one chapter and picks us up in verse 17. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions not having the spirit. And I read about somebody who was once in the old worldwide church of God who mocks people who don't keep Halloween. He's like, well, there's just can't, aren't spiritual enough or some nonsense along this line. 
Anyway, with those passages that I just read from Paul and Jude, now I'm going to read something from that Christianity.com article. We do not have any examples from Scripture that tell us how to celebrate October 31st. But we do have biblical principles to help us glorify God in our celebration. We can participate in Halloween in God-honoring ways, end quote, according to that article. Well, first of all, the article is admitting that, uh, that Halloween is not in the Bible. But it does say you're supposed to rely on biblical principles, and that part's right. Yet it's confused various lusts of the flesh with biblical principles. For example, here's the first reason it gives. Number one, pass out tracks with candy. Families often walk around neighborhoods or stop by houses to collect candy on Halloween. Jesus told us to make disciples of all people, Matthew 28. We participate in this disciple-making work by introducing people to the Savior, sometimes in small and practical ways. By passing out tracts to children, we are planting a seed that could grow into faith in Christ, 1 Corinthians 3, 6. Well, let's go to what Jesus actually said in uh, Matthew 28, starting in verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, did Jesus command that one should observe pagan holidays like Halloween? No, of course not. And is Halloween basically a pagan holiday? Yes. And even Christianity Today's, excuse me, Christianity.com, the article partially admits it because it says, some Christians decide not to celebrate the holiday because of its association with the occult and paganism. Well, Halloween is pagan. And it's not something a real Christian should celebrate. Now back to the Christianity.com article. Also, if we're going to pass out candy and tracts, we need to ensure that candy is of good quality. By passing out quality treats, parents and children have a better impression of the gospel tract. Now it's not clear what Christianity.com means regarding quality treats. Presumably, this means something other than the cheapest candies. But even then, is sending out candy the right thing to do? You know, it says in Isaiah 55, verse 2, listen carefully to me and eat what is good. Now, as it turns out, I got a lot of cavities as a kid. Now, I haven't gotten any uh, since I was, I think, 18. Uh, I haven't gotten any since I stopped celebrating Halloween and Easter. Uh, I liked uh, candy, by the way, for both those holidays. But I definitely ate a lot more candy because of Halloween and also Easter. And while most people can handle a small amount of candy, I'm fairly sure that my mouthful of cavities came from, uh, from those. Uh, and I say that because I wasn't really a soda drinker, and so that would be another cause of that kind of a thing. But anyway, no, the true gospel message, which is not in the tracts that the Protestants hand out anyway, not the complete one, uh, isn't, uh, what, isn't made sweeter by giving candy to kids. You want to know about the gospel? We have a free booklet, uh, The Gospel of the Kingdom of God. We have this available in over 15 or 1,600 languages, whatever the count is currently. And you can find this at csug.org, and it's free. Now, the article cited uh, from Christianity.com, 1 Corinthians 3 6. There, the Apostle Paul states, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Now, do you really think? That passage from the Apostle Paul was telling or encouraging the planting of seeds with paganism? Well, hopefully not. Hopefully you don't think that way. Yet, uh, many Protestants have the wrong biblical view on this. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. A lot of people think it's fine to blend pagan things in with uh, the truth and, and biblical concepts. But that's not what Paul wrote. Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 10, starting verse 20. He said, Rather, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice the demons and not the God. Now this is the same book that we talked about watering and planting. And Christianity.com says this is proof that they should do Halloween stuff. Anyway, 
Paul says, with the Gentile sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. Now, of course, the Gentiles don't think they're, didn't think they're doing it to demons. But Paul says, yes, that's what they're doing. And Paul says, and I don't want you to have fellowship with demons, you meaning Christians. You can't drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. Don't mix uh, the true Passover with pagan observances. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. But apparently some people thought they could. Verse 22, or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? We think it's okay for us to do that? No, Paul says, no, don't think it's okay. Paul's clearly teaching you do not blend pagan practices in with the true faith. But isn't that what Halloween is? Uh, again, many, yet many Protestants have claimed their faith is strong enough to not be affected by such thing, but the Apostle Paul says no. Now, with the five ways, here's the second one uh, that Christianity.com points to. Dress in costumes that represent goodness and truth. The article continues with, Another way to celebrate Halloween biblically is to choose costumes that exemplify Christian value, virtues. Many choices of costumes for children, teens, and adults are based on characters from horror movies. Oftentimes, these characters promote murder or the occult. Teens and adults also face difficulty because some costume choices are provocative. Well, the fact is that many costumes related to Halloween promote occult themes, of course, and some are intended to promote lust. The Bible is clear that women, for example, should dress modestly. We can go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. Pick this out in verse 8. I desire, therefore, verse 9, that women adorn themselves with, in modest apparel with propriety and moderation. Verse 10, what, which is proper for women professing godliness for good works. Well, that eliminates a lot of Halloween costumes, yet many who uh, claim Christianity, they violate what Paul wrote there. And by the way, where do the idea of costumes come from? Well, the... Wearing of scary costumes on Halloween actually originates with the Druid Samhain tradition of disguising yourself to hide from evil spirits. But of course, demons, could, demonic spirits can tell whether or not you're uh, who you are, even if you're wearing a costume. So obviously that didn't work. But the truth is, you know, just dressing in any costume is not going to deceive Satan or his demons. Now back to the Christianity.com article. The Bible encourages us to uh, think about those things which are true, noble, right, just, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. Philippians 4.8 Also, Christians should seek to glorify God in everything they do. 1 Corinthians 10.31, Colossians 3.17 Now that's true. Now I'd like to look at each of those scriptures. So let's start with Philippians 4, verse 8. Apostle Paul was inspired to write. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Now, if you one were to meditate on Halloween, one would realize it's not something praiseworthy from a Christian perspective. It's not a true Christian holy day. It's not something that's pure because, you know, there are various ones who are pushing the occult or they dress uh, provocatively uh, on Halloween. Uh, and it's not a holy day of virtue. Hence, those are reasons Halloween is not appropriate for Christians. Now, one book that I was looking at, it may be helpful for people, this book is also free at ccog.org. Go into the literature tab, click under books and booklets, and our books and booklets come up, like the one I held up before. And uh, this particular one, ccog.org, Meditation for Faithful Christians. What should you think about? Should you meditate? How should you meditate? Should you do Eastern meditation? Why not? Okay, this booklet goes into all of that and helps with Philippians 4.8. 
and you read this, you're not going to think, oh, I really should be meditating about how virtuous Halloween is, which doesn't make sense, but this is what the Christianity.com article is suggesting. Now, they pointed to uh, 1 Corinthians 10.31, and it says, Therefore, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. But that article failed to connect the fact that the 20th and 21st verses of that same chapter said, do not mix pagan things with biblical ones. Okay? And also, you know, you don't follow paganism for the glory of the true God. Let's go to uh, John, the Gospel of John, chapter 4. Uh, read something that Jesus said. John 4, starting verse 23, Jesus said, But the hour is coming, and now is, when true worshipers, not false Protestant worshipers, will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. And the truth is, Halloween is not a way to honor the Father. Wearing costumes is not a form of worshiping God in spirit and truth. Now, let's go to uh, Colossians uh, 3.17, which is uh, another verse that the Christianity.com article uh, pointed to. Colossians 3, verse 17. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. After referring to those three scriptures, but not quoting them, Christianity.com article then says, these verses from God's word give us a filter when choosing Halloween costumes. If the character we think of dressing up as does not fit the characteristics or glorify the Lord, then we should stop and consider if it's the best choice. Well, those verses are not a filter from God's word. The word of God does not purify Halloween or Halloween costumes. It's blasphemous, for example, to suggest that wearing co Halloween costumes is done in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's go to 2 Peter 3. So Christianity.com you know, you know, cited, without fully quoting some things from the Apostle Paul, and they twisted what it means. Where they come to the conclusion that it certainly doesn't mean. But in 2 Peter chapter 3, starting in verse 15, here's a warning from the Apostle. It says, Consider the long suffering of our Lord of salvation, and also our beloved brother Paul, who according to the wisdom given to him has written you, as also in all his epistles, speaking to them of those things in which some things are hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist their own destruction as they do the rest of the scriptures. Now, they'll say that the Protestant ministers are taught. They were taught traditions. They were not taught the original faith. They don't hold to the original faith. By the way, we have a book on that, fairly thick, Hope of Salvation, How the Continuing Church of God Differs from Protestantism. Protestant ministers do not hold a sola scriptura. They do not believe what the original church taught. There was nothing resembling uh, modern Protestantism in early, the early church, plus nothing like keeping Halloween in the early church as well. Anyway, Apostle Peter uh, warned that uh, these are untaught and unstable people. They twist scriptures to their own destruction as they do the rest of the scriptures, so not just what Paul wrote. Therefore, brethren, since you know this beforehand, Beware lest you fall from your own steadfastness and being led away with the error of the wicked. Do not be led away with the error of the wicked from Christianity.com. Promoting Halloween is promoting wickedness. Of course, many people prefer lying excuses instead of the truth and keeping God's commands. But that's also warned about in the last book of the Bible, if you want to go there. Book of Revelation, chapter 22. There we read, Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life, and enter through the gates into the city. But outside, people who don't make it, are dogs, 
sorcerers, sorcery is associated with Halloween, and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters, and, and whoever loves and practices a lie. Considering Halloween celebrations as being scripturally supported is a lie. Now, let's go to the third reason the Christianity.com article claims it's scriptural for celebrating Halloween. Go trunk or treating. Churches regularly hold fall festivals that include trunk or treating. These events are alternatives to traditional trick or treating. Now, so they mentioned fall festivals. Well, actually, the Bible enjoins four fall festivals um, but, but that, uh, that most people do not keep. Now, I'm going to hold up this book that we have. Should you keep God's holy days or demonic holidays? Now, that might sound like common sense. But instead of keeping God's holy days, most people profess Christianity keep demonic ones. Now, where are God's holy days listed? Well, you can find them in the book of Leviticus, chapter 23. Now, the Christianity.com article didn't refer to these at all. But Leviticus 23, starting in verse 2, God says to Moses, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, The feasts of the Lord which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, these are my feasts. These are God's festivals. Uh, first, he talks about uh, the Sabbath, and he talks about the Passover, uh, Pentecost. Then, if you cut down to verse 23, God says to Moses, uh, in the seventh month, the first day of the month, you shall keep a Sabbath rest, a memorial blowing of trumpets. Now, it's interesting that the Ninth month on the Roman calendar is called September, which actually means seventh month. Okay, it's supposed to be the seventh month. And typically, the uh, Feast of Trumpets starts in September, although in 2024 it started in October. So it starts right around this time. And so that one's mentioned. Um, then the next one mentioned, verse 26, the tenth day of the month will be the Day of Atonement. Then verse, 20, verse 33, the fifteenth day of the seventh month, the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days to the Lord. There shall be a holy convocation. And on the eighth day, you'll have a holy convocation. Holy convocation. Now I'm going to read verse 37. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations. And uh, you shall celebrate these uh, and then it says, verse 44, So Moses declared to the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. Now, as it turns out, Halloween and trunk or treating were not among them. Now, the Protestants say, well, that was Old Testament. And so Christians don't have to keep them. But there's a few points you ought to think about. The holy days of Leviticus 23 are actually in the Bible. Halloween's not. Jesus and his apostles kept those days. And early Christians kept them. And that's documented, by the way, in this free booklet that I held up before. Now with that in mind, I want to read part of the third verse of the book of Job. Not Job, Jude. Jude. He said that Christians are to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. The faith once for all delivered to the saints, including keeping the biblical holy days. All scholars know, who've studied this stuff know that early Christians kept the biblical holy days. Period. They did not keep the demonic holidays. Yet pretty much every year Protestant leaders uh, contend for the pagan attached Hall Halloween and not the biblical ones. Now why? If you went to Jude... Now I'm going to read verse 4. Here's the reason. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who were long ago marked for this condemnation. Ungodly men. Now, they may look like angels of light because that's how Satan's ministers look. Who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and Lord Jesus Christ. Because false teachers push lewdness, Christians need to be sure that they contend for the original faith, which was not Protestant. 
Now, you could be watching this, and you could be uh, Greco-Roman Catholic. Um, now, this particular book, again, both of these are free at ccug.org, uses predominantly Protestant translations of the Bible and quotes a lot of Protestant approved sources. This particular one quotes mostly Greco-Roman Catholic translations of the Bible, people they consider to be saints, to demonstrate, by the way, that they changed their faith. And, the, and again, the Protestant faith did not exist. It's not part of the uh, faith once for all delivered to the saints. Um, now, now false, false teachers, uh, they claim uh, that they uh, don't deny Jesus. But Jesus warned about people like him. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. You might be saying, well, my Protestant uh, minister, no, he's, he's, he's a good man. He believes in Jesus. He preaches Jesus all the time. So he, he's got a, and he's, God's worked with him. So therefore, now, you meaning me, you're wrong. Well, Jesus warned about people like that. Matthew 7, starting verse 21. Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. It is not the will of God the Father that people promote Halloween, amongst other things. Jesus said, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, haven't we prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And one of the reasons that many on the Greco-Roman Catholic side believe that their faith is the correct one is that demons cast out and various wonders that were, they've seen. Therefore, they said, ah, this has to be the proof of the true faith. Jesus said, no, it's not. Verse 23, And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And Protestantism practices lawlessness. And the Greco-Roman Catholics do as well. Uh, the Greco-Roman Catholics are a bit more like the Pharisees and they reason around God's law. Some of the Protestants either do that or they say it's not in effect when, it, when all early Christians believed they were supposed to keep the Ten Commandments, for example. Uh, even though a lot of Protestants reason around them or at least reason around one of them. Anyway, those who promote Halloween are practicing or promoting lawlessness, which Jesus condemned. Now, getting back to its uh, trunk or treat section, Christianity.com article says, Instead of focusing on skeletons, vampires, and other scary decorations, those who participate in trunk or treating adorn the trunks of their cars with fun and often biblically themed decorations. Such events are a wonderful way to fellowship with other believers, as the Bible encourages us to do in Hebrews 10.25. Also, fall festivals or trunk or treating at church are creative opportunities for outreach. Well, again, they're going back to uh, the fall, and I've mentioned the fall holy days, and the Protestants don't promote those, even though early Christians kept them. And we continue in Church of God, by the way, keep them this day, and you can find evidence of uh, Christians keeping the holy days throughout uh, the entire church age. Anyway, they mentioned Hebrews chapter 10. We're going to start with verse 24. Let's also go to verse 25. We read, Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. Now, that is not an admonition to get together to celebrate demonic holidays like the Christianity.com article hints at. Because uh, that would be a violation of 1 Corinthians uh, 10, verses 20 to 21. Now, Protestants really don't want to forsake the assembling themselves together. They would uh, assemble on the weekly Sabbath, which is on Saturday, as well as keep the biblical holy days. Yet, those uh, they'd like to forsake those. Anyway, the uh, bulk... The Protestants who celebrate Halloween approve of trick-or-treating, by the way, not just this trunk idea. Now, getting back to trunk-or-treat, the Christianity.com article says, Children and families from local communities could attend the event and meet Christians who lovingly li live out their faith. 1 Peter 2.12 Well, children and families 
can best lovingly live out their faith by striving to live according to the original and true Christian faith, which did not include December 31st celebrations. So anyway, let's see what it says in 1 Peter uh, 2, verse 12. Because one of the things I'm trying to do is to go to, and read the scriptures that Christianity.com cited as ways to celebrate Halloween biblically. It says, Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. In the day of visitation, will Christians have been made a proper example to Gentiles by encouraging pagan celebrations, uh, such as Halloween, or perhaps instead biblical ones, such as the weekly Sabbath and annual holy day? Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 5. You're not setting the right example for the Gentiles, the pagans, by doing pagan things. Anyway, Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 14, You're the light of the world. A city that shall be set on a hill cannot be hidden. Verse 5. Neither did they put a, a light in a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. We let our light shine by living as obedient and loving Christians, not by being one who wants to compromise and attend parties derived from paganism. Now, let's look at the fourth way Christianity.com article claims it's scriptural to celebrate Halloween. Number four, incorporate a prayer walk while trick-or-treating. Now, interesting, after advocating trunk-or-treating, the article gets back to trick-or-treating. So it's endorsing that. And let's look at uh, uh, another article related to uh, 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 trick-or-treating and where it comes from. If there's ghosts, goblins, witches, astronauts, cartoon characters, or oddly dressed creatures visiting your door for candy, chances are it's Halloween. Before you shell out the sweets, most of these visitors probably shout trick-or-treat. But, but why do they do that? The phrase is a subtle suggestion that if a treat like candy is given, the child will not perform a trick, mischief, on the owner of the house. This popular Halloween custom has its origin in the practice of souling, S-O-U-L-I-N-G, and guising. In the Middle Ages, poor people in Ireland and Britain would go souling on Halloween. Souling, and that was on uh, November 1st. Souling consists of going door to door and asking for food in return for saying prayers for the dead on All Saints Day. And here's another one. This is from uh, the Smithsonian. From ancient, history of trick or treating goes back centuries, from ancient Celts to medieval Eng England. Uh, Halloween tradition precedes the, the costume children who now will soon swarm your block. Every year these people come around. Where do they come from? It goes back 2,000 years to the Celtic holiday of Samhain, which uh, marked the, the new year. The uh, ancient Irish and Scottish people believed that the worlds of the dead and the living grew thin each year on November 1st, allowing demons to roam the earth again. Along with displaying offerings and lighting bonfires for spirits, Celts dressed up as the dead, hoping to blend in with the real demons and therefore skirt spiritual confrontation. So they're lying to themselves. You can't really hit from the demons that way. Fast forward to the 7th century when the Roman Catholic Church was in the business of converting pagan holidays into God-fearing ones. They turned the Celts' demon-dressed-up party into All Saints Day, moved the celebration of the Church's heavenly saints to November 1st, according to Gregory Third's reign. The church holiday was also called All Hallows or Hallow Mass, with Hallow meaning holy. By the early 11th century, the church also designated November 2nd as All Saints Day, an occasion to honor, honor the dead who are waiting for, they're waiting in purgatory before being sent to heaven. All Souls Day became an occasion for door to door, door souling. Poor people would visit homes of wealthy offering to pray for the homeowner's dead ones in exchange for soul cakes. 
The practice was soon taken over by children who asked for money, ale, or food. Back in Scotland, kids were doing something similar, but in costume. They visited households promising not prayers to the dead, but entertaining, entertainment. Guys and children would put on a disguise, and they would do things like singing or poetry um, recitation for treats. And then the uh, treats uh, were the order uh, of the evening. However, here's some from 1924. Halloween was observed in the usual manner by the young bloods. Fun is fun, tricks are tricks, but when such public buildings as school and memorial hall are molested with no option for trick or treat, we cannot see where the fun of the trick is enjoyed by the participants. Anyway, in the United States, as the earliest recorded example of the phrase trick or treat uh, was uh, happened in Michigan, where they would hear the Final ultimatum, tricks or, tricks or treats, uttered in a merciless tone by some small child who clenched a grubby fist, in a grubby, grubby fist, a chunk of soap capable of eliminating transparency in a number of windows. Now, growing up in Detroit, yes, windows were soaped and other things happened to houses that, that, who did not answer the call for uh, treats or who ran out of candy. Now, if you think about the expression trick or treat, it's wrong for a Christian to say, it's wrong if the person who is saying it intends to do damage for candy. It's also wrong if there's no intention to cause damage because therefore it's a false threat. Anyway, let's get back to the Christianity.com article. It says, praying for your neighbors as you pass their houses can be a powerful way to remember the need to love and point others to Christ. Believers are encouraged to pray continually uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. We're also to pray in spirit at all times and every occasion, which would apply to Halloween, end quote. Now it's true Christians are supposed to pray. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5. Pray without ceasing, starting verse 17. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Now this, however, is not a discussion about praying while participating in anti-God activities. Now they also cited uh, Ephesians 6, and um, let's go there. I'm going to read more than just one verse they quoted, they didn't quote it, but they quoted part of verse 18. Let's pick this up, Ephesians 6, pick it up in verse 11. Put on the whole army of God, that you may withstand against the wiles of the devil. For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Now let's cut down to verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. We are to put on the spiritual armor of God to resist the poles and deceits from demons and from dark forces. We're not supposed to violate the Word of God and tell us that because we're praying, our activities are blessed when we're following the ways of pagans. Now, speaking of Ephesians, let's look at something in chapter 5, which precedes chapter 6. Apostle Paul wrote, verse 1, Be imitators of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and sacrifice to God. Verse 3, But fornication, all, uncle all uncleanness and covetousness, and there's certainly covetousness associated with wanting candy, the way some people view it, let that not be even named among you. Neither, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting are not fitting, but rather the giving of thanks. For you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. Christianity today's comments are empty words. Be because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of the disobedient. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. We participate in their Halloween celebrations. 
Verse 8, For you were once in darkness, but you are now the light of the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what's acceptable to the Lord. Keeping God's days would be acceptable to the Lord. That's what Jesus did. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But no, Christianity.com said, oh, you can just do it this way. But rather expose them. And that's what this sermon is doing. For it's shameful to even speak of those things which are done in secret. Some of the things with the provocative costumes, for example. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever is manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And God's will is not that you're going to observe Halloween. And do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Halloween is a holiday of darkness. Where Christians are supposed to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. And as a, uh, you know, children tend to overly indulge in candy on Halloween, and many adults overly will indulge in alcohol then as well. If you get drunk on Halloween, uh, you know you're not being imitators of God's dear children. Now let's look at the fifth way the Christianity.com article claims is scriptural to celebrate Halloween. Celebrate the good. In addition to passing out tracts, dressing in costumes that honor God, participate in a trunk or treat at church, incorporate a prayer walk, which left out while they also said while you're trick or treating. Christians Christians can biblically celebrate Halloween by celebrating things which are good. Sometimes we can be so focused on things that we need to avoid we forget the things we can celebrate. The season of autumn gives us many good and beautiful things that we can enjoy and be thankful for. God is the source of all the good in the world, James 1.17. So we're going to go there in a moment. Hence, we can celebrate the blessings like delicious treats, spending time with family, changing leaves, pumpkins, and fun games. Of course, it left out. During the fall, you're supposed to keep God's holy days. Now, let's go to James 1, since they refer to that, verse 17. The Apostle James was inspired to write. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that's the Bible, not pagan traditions, that we might be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. Remember, every good gift is from God, but Halloween was not a gift from God. Now, the article at Christianity.com concludes with, quote, We can participate in Halloween in God-honoring ways while avoiding the activities that promote the occult. For there is no variation... Okay, I'm sorry. A few ways that Christians can biblically celebrate Halloween include passing out tracts with candy, choosing costumes that exemplify goodness and truth, participating in trunk or treat events at church, doing a prayer walk, and thanking God for his loving gifts. Well, I believe I addressed each of the scriptures that the Christianity.com article pointed out to, or cited, yet not one of them, not one of them, gives a single reason why Christians would want to participate or be part of a pagan holiday. Now, I stumbled over one time, and I think I said Christianity Today is supposed to Christianity.com. Well, Christianity Today also endorses Halloween. Uh, they say that uh, uh, about one out of ten Protestant pastors tells their people don't keep Halloween. Uh, the rest of them basically uh, do it some way or the other. And uh, they say that uh, seven out of ten Americans tend to celebrate it each year. And that there's some uh, people who are more likely to, to not uh, uh, celebrate it. But we in the Church of God, of course, don't. Here's an interesting quote from Christianity Today. 
And the more people go to church, the more skeptical they are of Halloween. Less than half, 44% who attend religious services at least once a week say Halloween is all good fun. Most Americans who go to church on religious holidays say that Halloween is all good fun, 82%. So the people who are more religious are less likely to think they should keep Halloween. Now, Halloween promotes a false gospel. Uh, people who claim they're reaching their neighbors or helping their neighbors by embracing it, it's not true. It's not good, clean, fun. Uh, and you know, the Bible warns in Proverbs 14, 12, and 16, 25, it's the way that seems right to a man, but it's, and it's the way of death. And people say, well, I just want to decide for myself. God warns in uh, Deuteronomy 12, verse 8, you shall not do as we are all doing here today, every man doing what's right in his own eyes. And let me go to Jeremiah. You don't have to go there. Jeremiah 21, verse 8. Say to this people, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will set before you a way of life and a way of death. There's God's holy days. There's demonic ones that end in death. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. You don't have to go there. Scripture says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today. I set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both you and your descendants will live. The demonically death-themed Halloween is not the way of life the Bible advocates. No true Christian publication would promote it. Now, you don't have to go there. We're going to go to uh, Jeremiah chapter uh, 10. Read a couple of verses. Thus says the Eternal, the Lord, Yahweh, Do not learn the way of the Gentiles. Don't be dismayed by the signs of heaven, for the Gentiles are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are futile. So don't try to take pagan customs, try, try to learn them, and then let's modify them. Now we won't dress as a, as a witch or, or a harlot. Instead, we'll dress as some make-believe character or something. Uh, at absolute best, Halloween customs are futile, and detract from the emphasis of the worship of the true God. And in uh, Exodus 23, verse 24, Moses was inspired to write, You shall not bow to their gods, nor serve them, nor do according to their works, but you shall utterly overthrow and completely break down their sacred pillars. Not only are we not supposed to worship the pagan gods, we're not to do according to their works, like Halloween. I'm going to go to Nehemiah chapter 13. Read a couple of verses, starting in verse 29. Now, Nehemiah was God's man. And he's praying to God, and he says, Remember them, O my God, because they have defiled the priesthood and the covenant of the priesthood and the Levites, which is what the, basically the Protestant ministry does. Verse 30. Thus I cleanse them of everything pagan. God's man cleansed the, the priesthood then, and the, the Levites, of everything pagan. So you think God thinks, oh, after Jesus came to pay the penalty for our sins, that, oh, well, we ought to see how pagan we can become. Um, the Protestant focus on the family, even though it's a little... Uh, Lukewarm on Halloween in certain parts. It says uh, a few things that I do want to mention. Despite the distance from its period of origin, Halloween still remains connected to paganism. On a general level, Halloween is a time of the year celebrated by the advocates of Wicca, a network of practicing witches. Uh, it, Wicca believes October 31st marks the time when separation between the spiritual and physical realms is the thinnest. In other words, Halloween is the best time to interact with the spiritual realm, according to the Wicca witches. Going further, there's other connections to paganism. Halloween's always maintained a relationship with occultism. Additionally, Halloween's premise includes an intentional and public display of imagery, mischief, and behavior generally looked down upon any other time of the year. Now, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6 to take this a step further. 
We're going to go to see something that the Apostle Paul wrote starting in verse 14. I'm chuckling to myself because when I was preparing this sermon, I didn't think I had enough uh, notes. And now I'm looking here, and um, am I a third way through? Uh, more than a third. But anyway, I'm not going to uh, go for another couple of hours. Anyway, 2 Corinthians 6, starting verse 14. Notice what the Apostle Paul wrote, and think about this in the context of Halloween. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What communion has light with darkness? What accord does Christ have with Belial or Satan? What part has a believer with an unbeliever? What agreement has a temple of God with idols? You're the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them, I'll walk among them, I'll be their God, they shall be my people. Therefore, verse 17, come out from them and be separate. Don't wear other kind of costumes and go to their Halloween parties. Do not touch what is unclean. And I will receive you, and I'll be a father to you. You'll be sons, my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Halloween is a holiday for unbelievers and witches. The Bible does not support their practices. You know, in Exodus 22, 18, it says you're not to, they weren't to promote sorceress to live. And let's go to Deuteronomy 18. Starting verse 10. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire, or who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all those who do these are an abomination to the Lord. Because he's an abomination, the Lord your God drives him out before you. But you're to be blameless before the Lord your God. For those nations which you dispossess, listen to soothsayers and diviners, but not for you. God has not appointed such for you. He's not appointed for us to be part of Halloween celebrations. Now, those passages are in the Old Testament. But the last chapter of the book of Revelation condemns sorcery. Uh, as well, and I've said that already, but also Apostle Paul, Galatians chapter 5. I'll give you a moment there, although I'm going to kind of read over it. Starting verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are, verse 20, idolatry, sorcery, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, 21, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Halloween is clearly a heresy, with elements of revelries the Bible teaches against. It's not a day for Christians. Uh, there was a former Satanist who became a Protestant minister. His name is John Ramirez. And he calls it, uh, uh, it's, re, it's, he says, why would you put your kids, your family, your whole eternity on a demonic altar? And he says, that, you know, you shouldn't do this. And he even quotes uh, the founder of uh, the Church of Satan, Anton LaVey, who said, I want to thank every Christian parent for allowing their children to celebrate Halloween, the devil's holiday once a year. Now, some people aren't sure LaVey said that, but one thing uh, Anton LaVey did write in his uh, book called The Satanic Bible, page uh, 96 on the 1976 version, after one's own birthday, the two major satanic holidays are Walpurgis Knot, which is a form of uh, Halloween that's also kept in Europe, and Halloween. Of course, the Bible does not encourage the celebration of Halloween or birthdays, for that matter, or other pagan practices. Now, I saw this headline from the Washington Post that says, Halloween is more Christian than pagan. And this author says, Halloween has similarities and possible accretions from Samhain, the Celtic end of summer celebration, but that doesn't make it a pagan holiday. Uh, it says uh, it's because it's got to do with All Souls Day and All Saints Day. And we know that festivals commemorating saints, All Hells Eve, existed in Europe by the year 800. Yeah, but Samhain was even older than that. It was two, at least 2,000 years old. And uh, 
So getting back to the Washington Post, it says, All Hallows' Eve came from Pope Benedict IV converted the uh, Roman Pantheon into a Christian church dedicated to saints and martyrs in the 7th century. That was called All Saints' Day. And then uh, we see Halloween, though, is a celebration of a Christian triumph over paganism rather than a pagan holiday masquerading as Christianity. Well, there was they were venerating statues in the uh, Pantheon, and my wife and I have been there a few times, actually, and now there are other statues that people bow down for in there. And the Washington Post says, by emphasizing dead souls, both good and evil, to decorating skeletons, lighting candles for procession, bonfires to ward, ward, ward off evil spirits, uh, and having carnival practices like costumes, the medieval and early modern traditions of Halloween fit with our modern time. What does this mean? It means if we celebrate Halloween, we definitely participate in a tradition with deep historical roots. Yes, but those deep historical roots are not biblical ones. Jesus ran into the same thing in his day. Let's go to Matthew chapter 15. Just because somebody's been doing something a long time doesn't make it biblical, doesn't make it Christian, doesn't make it right in God's sight. Matthew 15, starting in verse 1, we see criticism from the scribes and Pharisees. So verse 2 to so Jesus, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands when they eat bread. It's a long time tradition. From Godly people do that, therefore they're not godly because they're not doing it. Jesus said, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? God said, Honor your mother and father, but you say, No, 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 we've got this other way around it. Thus you've made the command of God of no effect by your tradition. Hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, verse 8, These people draw near to me with their mouth, honor me with their lips, but their heart's far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Many Protestants and Roman Catholics think the tradition of observing Halloween, All Saints Day, is much more important than keeping the biblical holy days. They're no better than the uh, tradition attached Pharisees that Jesus uh, repeatedly contempt in the Gospels. And by the way, getting back to Christianity.com, they have another article called All Saints Day, the meaning and history of his fine November 1st holiday. This holiday is a yearly reminder of our connectedness as Christians to the church. Perhaps you were taught to think of saints as statutes in a building. Well, actually, on All Saints Day, most who observe it do so by utilizing statues, and they often pray to them. Now, that same article from Christianity.com says, All Saints Day was changed by Pope Gregory III to today's date, November 1st. People prepared for the celebration of the night vigil on Hallow's Eve. Possibly because of a strong holdover from the influence of the Celtic Samhain Festival which many Christians in Ireland, Britain, Scotland, and Wales continue to observe. Yeah, there's a connection. Plus the fact of witches, goblins, etc. being connected to Halloween even today shows it's not a Christian holiday. It's not one that Christians would have endorsed. Uh, now, here's another person. This is a Protestant by the name of Matt uh, Arnold. And he says, was Halloween originally a Christian festival? He says the origins of Halloween are often said to be satanic. Well, they are. And we're told that uh, we talk about druids and darkness and Samhain. But this guy claims the actual origins of Halloween are solely rooted in the church, not in fictitious pagan festivals. A few centuries, after a few centuries, Christian martyrs uh, being martyred by Romans, various churches began to celebrate a day to remember and pray for them. The Syrian church celebrated mar uh, martyr days during the Passover week. The Greek church uh, did this after Pentecost. The Irish did it in April. And the Anglo-Franco-Germanic uh, church is November 1st. Uh, 609 saw Pope Benedict III rededicate the Roman pantheon, meaning all gods, to become the church of St. Mary and all saints. For the Roman Church, 13th of May was a celebration of all saints, that later known as Old Hallows. 
by uh, 835, Gregory decided to go along with the date of November 1st. With the symbolism of death and decay evident in the landscape, it made sense to choose this time of remembering and giving thanks to the dead. Okay, it made sense because pagans were doing this. That's just what happens. There are no records of a religious festival of Samhain. Well, that's nonsense. This guy asserts it. Halloween was not originally a Christian holiday, nor is it appropriate. And yes, uh, it was Samhain was uh, a, a pagan time. Uh, it was considered a time the gods became visible to humankind, they, and they tend to play uh, tricks on their worshippers. That's why they did what they do. Uh, the World Book Encyclopedia said the Druids and the ancient priests of Gaul and Britain believe ha on Halloween ghost spirits and fairies, witches, and elves came out to harm people. Thought the cat was sacred. Uh, from these Druid beliefs came the present day use of witches, goblins, and cats at Halloween festivals. The custom of using leaves, pumpkins, and corn stalks as Halloween decoration came from the Druids. The early peoples of Europe had a, a festival similar to the Druid holiday. The 700s, the Roman church named November 1st All Saints Day. The pagan customs as a Christian feast day were combined to Hollywood, excuse me, the Halloween festival. And Let's go back to the Bible. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 10. Starting in verse 8, Paul wrote, Let's not commit sexual immorality as some of those did. Nor, verse 10, Nor complain as some complained and were destroyed by the story. And all these things happened to them as examples that are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stand take heed lest he falls. We are not to follow heathen practices and think we're not going to be affected. Uh, here's something from uh, history.com. Halloween may be a secular affair today, dominated by candy costumes, trick-or-treating. It's rooted in the annual Celtic festival called Samhain, or Samhain. And it was appropriated by the uh, Roman Catholic Church 1,200 years ago. And the uh, ancient Celts did all this stuff. Samhain, the Celtic festival, that's the ancestor of Halloween, was their way of looking at the world uh, between light and darkness. Uh, Celtic year began at sundown. And uh, so, anyway, they had two big holidays a year, and that was one of them. Okay, Pope Gregory the First, also known as Gregory the Great, sent missionary to England. Instead of doing away with the religious customs of the non-Christian people, told them they could convert. He he said a site of a pagan temple could be converted to be a Christian church. In similar fashion, uh, Samhain, the Celts' dark supernatural festival, was converted and given a so-called Christian context. And that's what it's all about. The church mixed the traditions involving Celtic spirits and Catholic saints. Then they came up with All, all Saints Day. This uh, Matt Arnold guy then, going back to his article, says, If the ancient Druids were so evil, why did St. Columba, the Irish evangelist of Scotland, write, uh, My Druid is the Son of God. So to St. Columba, Druids were the holy people. Well, first of all, we don't know if this Columba guy was a true saint or not, and what information we have on him is pretty uh, light, but mostly based on legend. And it would make sense that a true Christian leader would call practicing pagans a holy people. And thirdly, on All Saints Day, what Roman Catholics do is they pray to saints to intervene in their lives or the lives of others. That Jesus said in Matthew 6, 6, you don't have to go there, that when you pray, you go to your room, shut the door, pray to your Father who's in a secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. We're not told to pray to saints also as our mediator. Uh, you don't have to go there, but Apostle Paul wrote in Timothy uh, chapter 2, verses 5 through 6, there's one God, one mediator between God and men, man Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom for all, to be testified in all 
due time. Now, people who pray to dead people, uh, that to for them or to them to intervene or to mediate, uh, that's what that's what's done on this so-called Christian holiday. It's not a scriptural holiday in in any way. Anyway, basically Christianity.com is saying, well, you can keep Halloween, but don't keep it the same way some pagans did. You can keep All Saints Day, but don't keep it the way the Greco-Roman Catholics keep it. And that God's going to approve of that. That's absurd. Now, I've got another article from another Protestant. I'm debating if I should go through it, but yeah, I've got some time. This is from a Protestant pastor by the name of uh, Alan uh, Rudnick. Here's seven ways he says Christians can take back Halloween. Number one, Understand that all Hallows Eve and the ancient pagan festival of Samhain are not the same. Gregory the Third and Fourth moved the Christian holiday All Saints Day from May 13th and November 1st to replace the pagan rituals on October 31st and November 1st. Gregory the Third instructed people to dress up as saints. Let the occult have Samhain or Samhain. We are taking All Hallows Eve back. So this is what he wrote. Well, first of all, Halloween is not a biblical holiday. Secondly, pagans often change practices associated with their holidays and celebrations. So Halloween now is pretty much that. And third, let's consider something about this Gregory the Third. You can go to Wikipedia and you can find out one of the things he did is he pushed idols and taught that the professors of Christ should not destroy idols, but instead venerate them or use them in their worship. And he did that in a, what's called a synod in November of 731. He also had various idols and icons put into a bunch of churches. He also put a new oratory in St. Peter's Basilica to house relics. A number of their saints. That's consistent with what the pagan religions do as well. Even to this day, uh, you see these Buddhist countries, they have these uh, things where they've got a relic that's supposed to be of Buddha in it, and they built these big things over them. Anyway, Gregory III did not practice original Christianity, hence his attempt to modify paganism doesn't make him a faithful Christian we'd want to follow. Yet, this is where a Protestant practice was telling you to look at. Thinking, you know, most people aren't going to look, people aren't going to really look up Gregory III and find out he's not a Christian. Anyway, a second reason he gives, the establishment of Christmas and Easter in Europe had pagan connections, but we don't abandon those holidays. Neither should we abandon All Hallows' Eve. Well, you know, two wrongs don't make a right. Certainly, yes, Christmas and Easter are pagan. You know, show them their symbols in the back of this book. Early Christians did not keep Easter Sunday. They did not keep Christmas. They didn't celebrate birthdays either. Christmas is related to the uh, Saturnalia celebration. And December 25th was actually the claim to be the birthday of the sun god Mithra. And Easter, according to Roman Catholic sources, like the Venerable Bede, uh, and actually the Catechism of the Catholic Church, is supposed to be Passover, which it's not. And it came from, the name comes from a pagan goddess. And many of the practices of paganism come from, I mean, of Easter come from paganism, which you can look up in the Catholic Encyclopedia and other sources will tell you that. Anyway, here's this Protestant's third point. Understanding that early Christians conceptualized or contextualized early pagan holidays into Christian holidays helps us see that we do not have to compromise our beliefs with pagan ones. Anthony McRoy, a fellow of the British uh, Royal Society, Society of Middle East Studies, uh, reminds us that, uh, of course, even if Christians did engage in contextualization, expressing their messages in worship in the language of the local people, that in no way implies doctrinal compromise. That is absolutely nonsense. Of course it means doctrinal compromise. But like even the biblical holy days like the early Christians did? No, do they know what the, what the biblical holy days mean? No, do they understand God's plan of salvation? No. Do they claim to believe the Bible? Yes. Did early Christians understand God's plan of salvation better than... Uh, the Greco-Roman Catholics and Protestants do now? Yes. That, by the way, is documented in this, this book that you don't understand. Instead, they won't wait for paganism. The reality is, Jesus and his disciples and early Christians didn't keep those other holidays. Now, his fourth point. Evil themes 
in our current secular Halloween, we're not always present. Thus, we can recapture the spiritual and the innocent. Halloween doesn't have to be a Halloween a holiday filled with Dracula's blood uh, and witches. Well, evil still is present in Halloween, and that was present from the, when it, it became a Roman Catholic holiday. And the fact that Halloween is still a holiday filled with Dracula's bloody masks or witches. Now, if you remove those, the Roman Catholic position of honoring their saints is still unbiblical in many ways. Uh, you know, the Roman Catholic Church teaches that uh, you should pray to saints, that the pray saints can hear your prayers, that saints can intervene uh, with, with you with God, but none of that's true. Nor did early Christians believe in any of that. Early Christians taught that uh, the dead were not conscious, and they were basically asleep. Now, at the cugwriter.com website, I've got an article called What Happens After Death. You can read that about. And it was from paganism, by the way, the idea of the immortality of the soul came from. I've got an article at cugwriter.com called do, 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 early, do Humans Possess Immortality? Early Christians didn't believe they did. Halloween is pagan, even without witches and vampires. In 1 Thessalonians 5, starting verse 21, The Apostle Paul wrote, and I'm going to read this from the literal standard version, Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Participating in Halloween activities clearly is not consistent with uh, avoiding the appearance of evil. Anyway, we need to hold fast to what's good in the Bible, and early Christians said they should keep the biblical holy days. Now, here's his point number five. If you still think Halloween's an evil day, then maybe you should see All Hallows' Eve as a time when Christians can laugh at and even mock evil. According to C.S. Lewis, the best way to drive out the devil is to jeer and flout him. But he cannot bear scorn. But that's not what the, uh, uh, the Bible teaches. The Apostle James wrote, by the way, in uh, chapter 4, starting in verse 4, Adulterers and adulteresses, don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Or do you think this, uh, do you want to be, a, whoever wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God? Or do you think the scripture says in vain, the spirit in us yearns jealously? But he gives more grace, God res resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee with you from you. You're not supposed to try to mock the devil like they're saying that's supposedly good. Draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. It'll lament, mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning, your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will exalt you. Those who promote Halloween are at best spiritual adulterers and adulteresses. We are supposed to resist, not taunt. Uh, Satan. And uh, Martin Luther said that uh, the best way to drive him out was to jeer him. But, uh, no, but Martin Luther didn't hold the original Christianity. As a matter of fact, this particular uh, book, front cover, that's an artist's uh, impression of a statue of uh, Polycarp of Smyrna, who was a faithful Christian. This is one of Martin Luther. This book actually has a list of many things that Martin Luther taught that were unbiblical and where he uh, didn't teach what the early church taught. Now, there's some things Martin Luther did teach that were correct, don't get me wrong, but his attitude toward the devil and the Bible were not correct. Uh, he may have claimed Sola Scriptura, but when it came down to it, he actually didn't believe that most books of the Bible uh, were proper, or quite a few of them, a very high percentage of them, anyway. Anyway, number six in this list, Christians should focus and teach the concept of celebrating All Saints Day, November 1st, in the churches. The term saints is used over 60 times in the New Testament. I'm quoting him here still. We Protestants use the word saint to describe Christians living and dead. We can also honor our loved ones who have given us Christ, such as our parents and grandparents. We can thank God for them and pray that the living saints may live in community. Christians use All Saints Day to light candles as an act of prayer, thanking God, the special people, the saints in our lives. Well, lighting candles is also a pagan custom. Continuing here. 
We can also learn from the saints of the church the last 2,000 years. We Protestants have often been fearful of honoring and learning from church saints for fear that we're venerating them as Catholics do. Praying to dead people is not Christian. Early Christians did not pray to dead saints, etc. All profess Jesus, whether they consider them Protestant, Greco Roman Catholic, or Church of God, are to do as Jude said, to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to saints. And that faith included nothing like Halloween or All Saints Day. And number seven from this of his seven points. Christ holds the deaths the key to deaths in Hades, Revelation one eighteen. We can take comfort in the fact that Christ defeated death. Even the mere name of Jesus Christ can make evil shudder and even follow the commands of God. Well, yes, Jesus did defeat death, and biblical holy days also point to that and how God's plan to save humans from second death. But does Halloween teach that? No. Anyway, you can't, Christians can't, quote, take back Halloween because Halloween's anti-biblical. Halloween was never a Christian observance. Now, according to that, Pat, Protestant pastor, if you feel the Roman bishop has authority over your spiritual life, then you can venerate dead saints or consider them mediators that uh, modified form of paganism pleases God, the multiple wrongs make a right, that adopting pagan customs is not biblical compromise, and that although vulgar and bad customs are often used, because not all, uh, excuse me, customs are often used, because not all cost, costumes are that way, that that makes the holiday okay that people should spend Halloween mocking evil and the devil when they celebrate a, a demonic holiday, and you should light candles like the Church of Rome, and that Halloween is some kind of memorial to Christ's death, and that keeping Halloween is following the commands of God, well, then clearly you don't believe the Bible. You know, Jesus told the religious leaders of his day, you don't have to go there, but Luke 16, verse 15, you are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is lightly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Uh, I've got an article about this uh, at the cfgwriter.com website. The article is titled, uh, Reasons False Christians Give to Celebrate Halloween. Uh, so I'm not going to go through everything else in here. But um, even a lot of uh, Roman Catholics uh, think it's wrong, yet some Roman Catholics say it's right because they say, quote, Catholic feasts are in continuity and fulfill the meaning of pagan ones. Early Christians didn't believe that. Early Christians felt that they should keep the biblical holy days, which help, point, uh, help explain God's plan of salvation and are doing things God's way. So anyway, I'm going to skip the uh, quotes here that uh, people have given, particularly even in the Roman Catholics now who think uh, this is wrong and, and pagan. But I want to go to uh, Colossians chapter uh, 2. You know, I've quoted a lot of Protestant leaders trying to tell you why you should be able to keep Halloween. But Colossians 2 verse 4 says, Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in flesh, I am with you in spirit, seeing to your good order and the steadfastness of your face in Christ. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up with him, established in the faith that you've been taught, abounding with it in it with thanksgiving. And they, was, they were keeping the biblical holy days. But verse 8, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men according to the basic principle of the world, and not according to Christ. Philosophies, tradition, unbiblical arguments from Protestants and others who don't believe the Bible doesn't make it right. They claim to believe the Bible, uh, but they're not going to. And they don't. Now, the origin of Halloween is clearly uh, a, a pagan. Uh, basically, uh, pumpkins... Uh, and jack lanterns were part of the old Celtic uh, lore. The uh, bobbing for apples by the also has a, myth, um, a mythological uh, reasons, and I'm not going to go through there. But I'm going to say that Jesus warned at Matthew 24:12 that lawlessness is going to abound the end time. And in 1 Timothy 4, verse 1, we read, according to the Apostle Paul, 
Now the Spirit expressly says in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Halloween is a lawless observance that involves deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. The Apostle Paul taught that Christians are supposed to be separate from the world as well as not to mix the cup of demons with the cup of the Lord. In other words, Christians aren't supposed to use pagan worship practices in an attempt to merge into uh, Christian ones. Those claiming that there are scriptural reasons for Christians to observe Halloween, they err, they err, not knowing the, the scriptures. I want to again quote something from the Apostle Paul. This is 1 Corinthians 10, starting verse 19. What am I saying then? Is an idol anything? Or is what is offered to an idol anything? Verse 20, but rather the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I don't want you to have fellowship with demons. You're not supposed to keep Halloween. You can't drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake in the Lord's table and the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than He is? If people really want to observe any days from the Bible, they should keep the same days the early Christians observed. They would keep the biblical holy days, not the pagan connected ones such as Halloween. Do not blend paganism uh, into your life and worship. True Christians do not celebrate Halloween. Do not fall for the deceitfulness of humans who try to tell you otherwise. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Continuing Church of God.